Hey, here are five stupid things I've noticed about classical mythology. The gods and heroes are often pretty stupid. One of the most obvious signs that religion is an invention of human beings is how fucking stupid we make our gods. Nowhere is this more emphatically exemplified than in the traditions of Greco-Roman mythology, which include tales of some truly astonishingly idiotic deities and heroes. Here are two of my favorites. First, there's Cronus, who eats all of his children, except his youngest son Zeus, because Rhea, Zeus's mother, feeds Cronus a rock which he thinks is Zeus because apparently rocks and babies feel just the same on the way down. Second, there's Odysseus, who is such a cocky bastard after blinding the Cyclops Polyphemus that he brags on himself, basically saying, hey, if anybody asks who poked your eye out with a big burning fucking stick, you make sure to tell them that it was Odysseus from Ithaca, punk. So Polyphemus' dad, Poseidon, god of the sea, sees to it that Odysseus gets lost on his way home to Ithaca for ten years. And really, it serves Odysseus right. I mean, after all, he, even more so than most people, should realize one thing about the gods. They're also mostly assholes. The classical gods are such dicks, aren't they? I mean, sure, some are a little better than others, but not really enough to raise the average by all that much. Their pettiness, jealousy, and vindictiveness dwarfs that of even the most notorious human rulers from ancient and modern history, and that is saying something. Worst of all may have been the king of the gods himself, Zeus, who fucked anything that moved, even if he had to transform himself into an animal to do it, treated his lovers and his children like shit, and, oh yeah, loved coming up with outlandishly excessive punishments. Often the recipients of a punishment from Zeus were people, gods or humans, who had done some pretty heinous shit, but that doesn't mean their punishments weren't overkill all the same. Take Sisyphus, for example, the murderous king who was condemned to roll a boulder up a hill over and over again for eternity. I mean, sure, he was an asshole, but it's still hard not to feel sorry for the guy. And what about poor Prometheus, who didn't do anything wrong, at least not from our human perspective, and yet his punishment for stealing fire and giving it to us was being chained to a cliff and having an eagle eat his liver every day forever. Or at least until Hercules showed up. It was a whole thing. It's drenched in misogyny. The religion of the ancient Greeks, like the Abrahamic faiths that eventually succeeded it, takes a dim view of women. The first woman, Pandora, is depicted as being responsible for releasing evil into the world. Other women are generally shown to be greedy and untrustworthy and are often cast in the role of the seductress, tempting unsuspecting men to sin and ruination. Even female characters for whom we might be inclined to harbor some sympathy, like Hera, Zeus's perpetually cheated on wife, are usually revealed to be vicious, jealous, and spiteful. So, at best, they're no worse than the men who are total bastards. The gods obtain worship through fear. The gods of Greek and Roman mythology aren't interested in being role models for us, for the most part. They don't care whether we kill each other or love each other. They're reluctant to use their powers to help us, and they can take a dim view of their fellow gods if their actions are perceived as having aided humanity too much, as in the case of Prometheus. They demand our adulation, and yet they show themselves time and time again through their actions toward humanity and each other to be utterly unworthy of it. Power, not goodness, not love, but power is what is meant to compel our worship. The power of fickle, self-centered gods and the fear that follows from it. Small wonder that even after all these centuries, they still feel so familiar. The hardest part is only picking five. Catch you next time.